when we go live, so. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> good morning, everyone. I'll do this again in a few minutes, but <laughs> it's good to see everyone. <laughs> Great. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Christian Layman Church. Hello. Yeah, you guys can <laughs> Welcome to our Sunday morning worship service. Uh, for those of you joining online, I don't know if you heard just a loud applause and all that stuff, but we are basically back in SDA. We're back in the sanctuary. And if you've been following us, you know that uh, we've been trying to get back in for a little bit, and it's definitely by God's grace that we are here uh, answered prayers that we are here, that he has allowed us to be back in the sanctuary, and that there are people in the pews worshiping together with us. Um, for those of you online, I know you wish you could be here. Uh, I wish you could be here too, um, and that is coming very, very soon. Right now, uh, in the month of July, we just have a soft opening for vaccinated uh, ministry leaders and volunteers to help us figure all of this out. We want to make sure that everyone is uh, covered and safe and, and healthy and make sure the process is smooth for when everyone is able to come. So uh, keep an eye out for different announcements. Uh, we hope to maybe open up in August. If, if not August, definitely by September we will be back at SDA. So keep an eye out for all of Lynn and, well, no, I guess not Monto, Lynn's, <laughs> Lynn's announcements um, and through your email. Now, for everyone here, can I have everyone just say good morning? Good morning. Good morning. Okay, it feels so good to be worshiping in person with all of you. 
Um, I have been in my room most of the pandemic, just leading worship by myself, and I miss uh, just hearing your voices and seeing your beautiful faces, and I know that you are smiling behind those masks. I'm imagining it right now, but um, I'm just thinking this morning, let's just lift up and make a joyful noise to the Lord. Let's just, let's just make this place loud. And if you're at home, make your homes loud. It's okay, your neighbors won't mind. Um, but let's start off this morning just giving glory to the one who deserves it all. Giving glory to the Lord. He is faithful. He is good. He is merciful and kind. And he is worthy to be praised. So, for those of you here, you can stand if you would like. Um, and at home, take whatever posture uh, you'd like to prepare yourselves to be in uh, the presence of the Lord. Let me pray for us to start. Almighty God, gracious Heavenly Father, we love you so much. And we thank you for being our God. We thank you for being faithful, for being mighty and powerful for being a God that is so big and yet so close to us, that you uh, care about everything in the world, and yet you still know each and every single one of us, our circumstances, our struggles, our joys, and our pains. You see us, Lord. We thank you for being that God. And we pray this morning that you would be glorified in this place, that your presence would be with us as we sing, as we shout, as we lift up a joyful noise to the name that is higher than any name on earth. God, we know that worship is not just singing, not just music, but it is a powerful weapon against the enemy. And so, Lord, let us worship without any restraint this morning, declaring your power and your glory and your mercy and your sovereignty over all things. We love you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Let's worship.
enter into this new season of coming back to church and things are opening up again. Um, I know there can be a lot of anxiety. There's always sometimes a little bit of anxiety with transitions. Um, but I'm reminded that Jesus is Lord of all. And when we continue to look up at him, keep our eyes focused upon him and his faithfulness and what he has done and all the worries of the world just seem to just slide right off. And so I invite you just this morning to allow the Lord to take all of those burdens, all those anxieties, those worries, and those fears, um, and look up at him. Look up at the one who is in control over it all. This world, I will lay them at your feet, surrender every anxious thought for perfect peace, your perfect peace. All the loved ones I hold dear. and dreams and all my fears I will choose to trust your name in everything in everything so I will look up for there is none above you I will bow down to tell you that I need healer all my life 
all my cares on you, King of kings, mighty Savior, all my life, all my cares on you, Prince of peace, perfect healer, all my life, all my cares. tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord. Holy Spirit you are welcome come flood Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close nothing can compare you're our living hope your presence Lord. I've tasted and seen from the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free shame is undone your presence Lord. Holy Spirit you are welcome here. come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory God is what our hearts long to be your 
us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your let us let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your last time. Yeah. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your plan last time, Lord. Oh, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory. God, we thank you once again for who you are, and we thank you that you were in this room <laughs> with us as we were worshiping. Lord, we thank you for your presence that is so powerful, that, that you gave us the, the, the gift of your Holy Spirit when you ascended back up into heaven, Lord, and you didn't leave us alone, that there is the power um, of Jesus Christ within us, the power, the resurrection power that raised Jesus from the dead, that's the same power we have access to, Lord. We know that life is hard. Um, we know that the enemy is clever. We know that there are things um, that keep us from you. We know that your spirit and your power is stronger than that. And so help us to remember to always worship, always to look up at you and to know the power that we have in your Holy Spirit to be able to do this life and to live our faith out for you, Lord. We love you so much, and we thank you for this, just this blessing to be able to worship together once again. We thank you, Lord. Be with us as we continue to worship, as we continue to dive into your word and finish off the book of Ephesians. May you be speaking to us in ways we would not even expect. We love you so much, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You guys can all be seated. Um, now for a time of announcements and community life, I'd like to invite Stephen up. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Is that great or what? I just felt so alive in here. Thank you, worship team. And for those of you on Zoom, I hope you could feel the energy here. Um, it'll just be a, a short while before all of us can be here, and this place will really, really come alive. Oh, this is fine. Frank, you're going to blur my face, right? That's, that's good. Okay, cool. Anyways, good morning, CLC. My name is Steven, and this is our community life segment where uh, we just talk to you about what's going on here in our community. Uh, simply put, the mission statement here at CLC is to make disciples who love God, love people, and let's see if you guys got it, serve the world. There you go. All right. We're right back at it. Um, one way that we seek to love others is connecting with all of you. Um, so if this is your first time here at CLC, welcome. Uh, we're glad you could join us. We'd love to get to know you and to tell you a little bit more about what we're all about uh, and get to know you. So simply just email us at info at christianlayman.org or visit us at christianlayman.org contact for more information. And for those of you who are online, 
uh, continuing the tradition of the question of the week. The question of the week would be, is it pronounced caramel or caramel? You get back to me on that one. Let us know in the comment section. So, Spirit West Coast. Due to the gracious generosity of a family, uh, we've come across a block of tickets to Spirit West Coast, where Chris Tomlin, Phil Wickham, and others will lead us in a time of worship. It's on Sunday uh, next week, July 18th, at 4 p.m. at Concord Pavilion, at no cost. So there are limited spots available, so if you're interested, please let Pastor Eric know uh, as soon as possible, and we can reserve a spot for you. We've already got about 30 people going from CLC, so don't miss out on the fun. And as we are moving back to in-person, a lot of the ministries could use uh, some of the help that we had. Um, if, if you were part of any of these ministries, reach out to your ministry team leader to see uh, how you can serve and get plugged back in um, and just make this all work out. And one ministry that actually is looking for uh, some more assistance is the media and live streaming team. If you're interested, please email Frank at frank at christianlayman.org. And a couple of other last minute announcements uh, for those of you who have children from uh, preschool to fifth grade. We are having our summer CM event next week, and today is the last day to RSVP. So if you haven't done that already, go ahead and um, find that email where we sent that out and try to RSVP by today. We'd love to see you next week. Um, and as a reminder, there is no social hall for the month of July. So sorry about that. But without further ado, I'd like to uh, welcome up the man who first started the Zoom services and will now be the first one to start the back-in-person services, Pastor Ben. Uh, you, you know, that's so funny because uh, as we were praying this morning, uh, Gordon was saying that, yeah, you're the one who actually started uh, the uh, shelter uh, Zoom services on March 15th of last year, and now that you are the one who are actually going to announce that we are going to be in person in service of 2021, and I am so glad that, you know what, that we could be able to really come together, uh, worship together, um, bond together, uh, see together, uh, whatever we do, and one thing I know that um, we're still missing is, I heard, uh, the food, right? The fellowship, right? The fellowship part. I, I know it's coming. I know it's coming. And, and I know that uh, something that Calvin has always been kind of like kind of bragging. You got to see the holy chow, holy chow. And uh, we'll see. We'll see one day. But anyways, I, I am so glad uh, to be here at this place. I, I remember last year on March 1st, uh, I was here, um, not as a staff, but as a just kind of a person just coming to view or, or to see what CLC is all about. And I just, you know, it's, God was so faithful that in a year from now or from then that I, I am here as one of the pastoral staff. So those of you guys who are watching at home, um, welcome, welcome. And those of you guys who are watching for the first time, welcome to our church family. Now, you guys know that we're actually slowly winding down uh, our sermon series called A Whole New World. And today, we're going to take a look at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 20. And next week, Pastor Calvin will be up, closing up and wrapping up this, this whole sermon series. So uh, let's dive into today's passage, which is in, which is in um, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 13. Uh, it says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and be, in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the de uh, devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against the flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the power of this darkness world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand. Have you guys ever one of those days that you wake up, you knew that today is going to be a very, very special day? You knew that today is going to be something, you know, fun and exciting. Well, a while back, a while back, I had one of those days. When I woke up, I knew today was going to be very, very special. So I went out to the church. I went out to the church office. 
And I saw one of my um, pastors who sat right next to me in the cubicles massaging his stomach, you know, just, just massaging his stomachs. And when he saw me, you know, coming into the, uh, to, to the room, he, he looked at me and says, Hey, Ben, do I look fat? Or do I look fit? And, and, and I was saying, you know what, where is this coming from? Why do you ask? Well, uh, he was telling me that, you know, last night, my wife and I went to go watch the movie Troy, the new movie that Brad Pitt, now, as you can see, you know, Brad Pitt's Troy wasn't, you know, it, it was like 2004. Anyways, my wife and I went to go watch the movie Troy, and, and you know what? And my wife saw Brad Pitt for the first time, and all of a sudden she asked, honey, how old is Brad Pitt? And, and, and my friend goes, I think he's 39 years old at that time, right? At that time. I think he's 39 years old. And my wife didn't watch the movie. He just kept staring at Brad Pitt, staring at my stomach. He looks like that, and you look like that? And so uh, he, he was telling me that little escapade that he had last night. You, you know, um, there are many different kinds of strength. You could be physically strong like Brad Pitt or uh, one of my favorite um, uh, uh, WWE wrestler turned slash actor, Dwayne Johnson. I think he's 49 years old now. Or you could be emotionally strong. You could handle a lot of pressure, work for long hours. Maybe you're the one who's the emotional anchor in your family and everybody leans on you for that emotional support. But you know what? As a Christian, I think the most important strength is the strength that you need in the Lord, or the strength that is measured by how often we are on our knees. Because our strength is not of the body. Our strength is of the spirit, measured in faithfulness, trust, and perseverance. And even Paul today advised us to be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Verse 12. Because he knew that as he was writing from prison that our struggles, our battles was not of flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers of principalities. You know, when I was graduating from my seminary, one of the professors at our graduation, he, he told us, I still remember, he told us that as you are going out into the world, you are heading into the battlegrounds, not playgrounds that your ministry that you're about to embark, that our, your Christian walk, would not be all bed of roses. I mean, isn't that true? As I look back in, in my spiritual journey, I mean, you know what? I'll be honest with you. The life that I walked weren't all bed of roses. Why? Because since the fall of Satan from heaven, Satan came down to earth and he has wrecked havoc on earth. And if you are a believer, you got to believe that our battles are not against flesh and blood, but of powers of principalities. Even in Revelation chapter 12, it says, whatever God hates, okay, I'm sorry, whatever God loves, Satan will hate. Whatever God loves, Satan will hate. And if you are the one who said, yeah, you know what, we're going to face some difficult times. And even Jesus said, if he hates you, understand that he has hated me first. Now, don't worry. Because the war had been declared over. And Satan had been defeated on Calvary, as you know. But the outcome of the little battles that we face daily is not determined by how strong we are physically or emotionally, but how strong you are spiritually. You know, um, since this COVID, a lot of these theologians and researchers are saying that doing ministry after COVID is going to be very, very different. And for those of you guys who are at home watching this service, as I'm watching all of you guys who are live, everybody's wearing masks in our pews right now. I mean, just take a look around. I mean, isn't it a little bit different from what it was a year ago? And, you know, as for me, as for me, you know what? I still remember talking to Rick at the parking lot after giving 
a first Zoom message. And I was complaining that, you know what, man, that was so weird, preaching in front of a camera where nobody, I can't see anybody. And you know what, <laughs> now, today, this whole week, as I knew that I was going to be preaching to a live audience, man, it is so weird because I done it. Last month, you guys remember, I did it in the fellowship hall of the SA, and I said to myself afterwards, man, it is so weird to preach in front of a live audience. <laughs> or perhaps this whole year, right, our, our Christian walk hasn't been the same. So this morning, so this morning, I, I want us to imagine that we are in a spiritual gym. Actually, we are. We are at the spiritual gym, the church, right? And let's start pumping some spiritual irons to flex some muscles, those muscles that have been kind of dormant, and ask yourself this question, how strong am I? How spiritually fit am I? Especially in the battlefields that Satan has laid out, in the evil schemes or the strategies or the temptations and trials that may come from the enemies. Now, whenever we go into battle, I believe that it is very, very important for us to know who the enemy is and what is he up to, what is he like. You just don't go in kind of half-cocked and into the battle saying, you know what, give me a gun, give me a shield, give me a tank. you got to know the strategies of the enemy. Now, a long time ago, you know what, I, I was a really, really big history buff, Right? And so when I was in, in, in my high school and collegiate years, I, I remember reading a book about General George G. Patton, one of the generals in the World War II. And he was engaging in this great battle against Erwin Rommel of the German forces in the plains of North Africa. And, and in his books, it is recorded that during the battle sometimes, the, as their tanks were kind of close by, and General Patton stuck his head out, right, out of his tank and shouted, Hey, Romo, I read your book. I, I read your book. You see, General Ehrman Romo had written a book entitled Infantry Attacks, where he outlined his entire war, uh, wartime strategy. And George C. G. Patton read it. He, he was a voracious reader, and he wanted to find out who his enemy was up to. And it was knowing from that, from the book that would have helped him to defeat the enemy. Now, the devil hasn't written a book, but God has. And in his book, the Bible, he has detailed out, he wrote out who our enemy is, what is he like, and what are the strategies that he's up to, he likes. And if you know the Bible inside and out, you're going to be able to understand how to mess, best make your defense. But if you don't, if you're not in the book, we're going to be like sitting ducks. And so let me just kind of illustrate or say to you, what does the Bible say about Satan? Or in Job chapter 2 verse 7, it says, Satan has the power to afflict because it struck Job with painful boils from the soles of his feet to the crown of his head. Or maybe in Zechariah chapter 3 verse 1, it lays out that Satan has the power to oppose God's people. Or even 2 Corinthians 11.3 says, you know, Satan has the ability to deceive its believers. John 10.10 10 says, the thief comes only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And I like this one. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says that he has the ability to blind the minds of all unbelievers. Now, if you read, you know, the, the, the plan, the strategies that, that the Bible laid out, what the enemy is really, really like, and it's clearly, you know, laid out in Satan's in the strategies, but you know what, also, that the Bible strategizes or plans out God's plan for us to become spiritually fit. And certain weights that we need to use, certain, certain spiritual armors that for us to use, so that we could actually defend. And that is actually found in today's verse. So if you read in verse 14, it says, Stand firm, men, then, with the belt of the truth buckle around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. 
in addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation, the sword of spirit, which is the word of God. Now, I'm going to just go in briefly because today's uh, message is not about the armor, but actually it's about a special armor that we kind of negate, we kind of forget. Well, first, belt of truth. Truth is the belt that holds all the believer's armors together as well. The ultimate truth can be found in God's word and the person of Jesus Christ. And we know that truth, in order to protect ourselves against the flesh, the world, the father of lies, truth grounds us, reminds us who we are, our identity in Jesus Christ. The second armor is the breastplate of righteousness. You know, as believers, we have no righteousness apart from that which has given us to by Jesus Christ that our breastplate uh, uh, in his righteousness, his righteousness will never fail. Though we have no righteousness of our own, we must still by his power choose to do what is right though, being rooted in God's word, which is very, very powerful, protecting our hearts and killing our flesh in order for us to defeat the enemy. What about this one, the shoes of peace? Shoes of peace is so that we can stand firm in the good news of the gospel, so that our peace will shine through us, in us, so that the light that we could actually become to all that we encounter, that we will also be able to move quickly with this shield of peace. The next is the shield of faith. Faith is a shield of all the believers. Trusting in God's power, protection is imperative in remaining steadfast. And when the battle rages on, we must remember that God works all things for good, he is always true to his, all his promises. Helmet of salvation. The believer's helmet of salvation is the most crucial piece of the armor for the Christians. Without the indwelling Holy Spirit that enters a believer at the moment of salvation, all the armor is useless. Salvation empowers believers to fight. It protects us in our weaknesses. Without salvation, there is no victory. And lastly, to use, to use the sword of the Spirit. Our sword is the word of God, both written and incarnate word. Every other piece of armor protects us against the attacks. With God's words, we are truly able to fight and defeat all the enemies. And Christ used scriptures to defeat Satan when he was tempted in the desert, right? Remember? And we must do the same thing as well. And lastly, by faith, we as God's warriors are to put on the whole armor of God so that we are to prepare to live day by day in a spiritual victory. Now, if you're most Christians, we stop here. We stop at verse 17. Okay, I have to put on the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, so on. And then we think we're ready to for battle, except we have one more offensive weapon, a special weapon. Actually, I call it a secret weapon. You guys, know what, you guys want to know what that is? It's the air support. It's what I call the air support. And the secret weapon is found in verse 18. It is actually prayer. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. And with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Pray also for me that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given to me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearfully, fearlessly as I should. Now, if you look at these two verses, Paul is talking about all kinds of spirit-led and empowered prayers that breaks down every demonic stronghold. Not only in people, but also in the territories that is dominated by demonic spirits. You know, next month, for the first time, I think, and this is something that Pam had to share with me, we're going to meet on a Saturday, the first Saturday of August, and we're going to go and do a prayer walk around SCA, like Merritt. And I'm excited, because when we pray, it really, really deliberates, right, the, 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 those dominant uh, areas that Satan has been hold. And you guys know in, 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 in COVID, what's been happening in, in Oakland. You know, w Oakland is probably one of the most dangerous areas in, in, in this area that we live. 
And, and some of us may, may be these individuals who are led to pray in, in, in not only just in, in just prayers, but also in tongues. Now, you know, my message is not about tongues today. But, but I, I want you to just be aware that prayers are, are not just our own words. Now, don't get me wrong. Paul is clear when he writes to, to the writers of Corinthians that all Christians are, are not speaking in tongues. If you read in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We know that the Corinthians were very gifted people. But I, I can't see him telling all the believers in Ephesus that, you know, at praying in the Spirit was to only to pray in their own given language, which was Greek. That the body of Jesus Christ is a multifaceted spiritual organism that uses the gift and talent for all of us to pull down the spiritual strongholds that throughout many different kinds of prayers, even the prayer of tongue. And that spirit-led prayer is always backed up by the authority of God and the presence of his spirit. You know, C.S. Lewis wrote, in his book, Mere Christianity, that the world is an enemy-occupied territory and the Christianity is the story of how the rifle king has landed and is calling all of us to take part in a great campaign of the sabotage. And it is primarily through prayer that much of this sabotage takes place. Prayer is how we spiritually fight back against the enemy. Prayer is fundamentally a warfare activity. You know, this week, as I was reading, and it's a verse that we all know, right? It's a familiar passage that we all know. Now, you know, if I were to compare prayers to a modern-day warfare, it would be something like this. Before the Marines, before the Army, or even the Navy that goes into for battle, the military sends the bombers, right? The bombers, right? Now, these laser-guided precision bombs and missiles using intelligence-gathering data and global positioning satellites, these bombs destroy the targets. And in recent, most modern combat warfares, you know, America was able to win many, many battles in record time because we, we sent the bombers first before we sending the infantry. And I think if, if Paul was writing today that he would use this illustration as he writes to the church of Ephesus, that in these verses, Paul writes about prayer. Put on the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of the gospel, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the word of which is God, and finally, the air support of prayer. Or I came up with that, right? The laser-guided smart bombs of prayers. Now, obviously, the, this, this illustration just really doesn't really fit into the Roman soldier imagery, but the point is that prayer is vitally important in our spiritual warfare, but we forget sometimes we don't exercise it enough, or we don't flex the spiritual muscles and we become vulnerable. You know, Scripture makes it clear that the answer to everything in our lives is prayer mixed with faith. Even Apostle Paul writes, Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayers and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests made known to God. You know, here in Paul is saying, Seek the Lord in every area of your life and thank Him ahead of time for, you know, God hearing our prayers. You know, Paul's emphasis is very clear here and then. Always pray. You know, prayer shouldn't be used as a last resort. We're going to our friends first, then to our pastors and counselors, and finally, you know what, I, I, I can't solve this. So you know what, I'm just going to go on my knees. No, Paul and, and God is saying to us, come to me. Come to me first. Hey, do you guys remember the feeding of the 5,000? I, I love the story where Philip and Andrew comes to Jesus. He says, Jesus, even 200 worth denarius of food is not going to be able to feed all these kinds of people. Well, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And I love the response of Jesus. What did Jesus do? He, he, he grabbed, right? He took 
the, the boy's lunch, right? He grabs the, 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 the fish and the bread. He, he wasn't anxious. He wasn't terrified. He simply looks up to heaven and he gave thanks. But what about the verse that I love the most, which is Matthew 6.33, but seek the kingdom of God and the righteousness first, and then all these things shall be added unto you. And this morning, I feel like this whole week, God was kind of addressing it to me. Because, you know what, I was actually guilty. H- how was your prayer life during the shelter in place? How was your personal prayer life while we were being sheltered for about a year and four months, right? You know, I think sometimes God is deeply wounded by the neglect of prayers among his people. You know, if you guys know in the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah 2.32 says, does a young woman forget her jewelry? Uh, This morning, my wife, um, she got up really early, got excited because it was her first time in a year and three months that she actually attended a church. And, and this morning, she got up really early, took a shower, and, and, and she's putting on makeups and all these things. And, but Jeremiah says, does a young woman forget her jewelry or a bride her wedding dress? Yet for years, on end, my people have forgotten who I was. Now, here's another question that, you know what, that God was kind of, you know what, just, just, you know what, putting in my heart this week is that another question that God might be asking of us is that this morning is that as we are now trying to get back to, you know, after COVID worship, how can God's own people who are under constant attack from the enemies, facing troubles and temptation of all sides, could go weeks after week without seeking him first? How can we claim the love of Jesus Christ? How can we claim that we love Jesus Christ and believe in his promises and yet never draw near to his heart? You know, um, this quote, this this thing I just threw out, right? Um, I know all of you guys have fights, right? With with your spouses, right? right? Now, can you imagine something? You just had a fight with your wife or your husband, right? And you're in a car, and you guys are going for like three or four or five hours of vacation to whatever. I know, Colorado, you know, our youth pastor just came from Colorado. So can you just imagine? Can you just imagine? Now, I I want you to imagine this. You guys are going on a long vacation, and you just fought with your spouse. And through that three, four, five hours, there's no communication. There's complete silence. How would you feel? Is, is anybody going, that's fine with me, man. And, you know, I, I get my wife's or my, my husband's nagging enough. Four or five hours, no problem. Is there anybody who could say that? No, man, that, that would drive me crazy. Three, four hours in a car, it was just dead silence. You know, the early disciples saw that their fight was not against flesh and blood, against the spiritual foes. And how did they dis- respond to the, uh, demonic persecutions? You know what? They p- prayed passionately with their voices raised to God. It, it wasn't just turning to prayer, but they all prayed aloud in unison in various kinds of languages, in tongue as well, as the Spirit led them. And, and we see that, that example in Acts chapter two, uh, 4, verse 23 to 21. After Peter and John were put in jail by the Jewish leadership for the crimes of healing a lame person and at the gate called Beautiful. The court's appearance before the Sanhedrin was set before the date, and Peter, under the control and influence of the Spirit, they spoke fearlessly and told the chief priests, scribes, leaders, they would not stop speaking about Jesus. They were released after many threats. Now, notice what the believers did after they were threatened. And they were what? In verse 31, after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Spirit, and they spoke the word of God boldly. 
At the very place where the believers were all joined together were shaken after they had raised their voices to God in spirit and power prayer. And the result of this kind of prayer was that the rooms where they were gathered was shaken under the power of the Spirit again. And the believers were filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak the message of God with what? With boldness. Boldness. Why did they pray? Because they wanted to preach the gospel with boldness. To go back at the territory that Satan had taken over. Hey guys, do you guys know when Satan hates us the most? Do you know when Satan hates us the most as believers? When we start to invade his territory. Or when we start to preach with boldness. And now, I want you guys to go back. I want to conclude. In verse 18 in Ephesians chapter 6, and pray, Spirit, of all occasions, of all the kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Pray also for me whenever I open my mouth, words may be given to me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Do you guys know why God gave us the armor? All the armors that we see in the book of Ephesians is because so that we may declare it. We may go and present the gospel to those people who are in need. That's why, that's why when we actually spread the gospel, that is going to be the greatest spiritual attack in our life. You know, um, in my long sojourn of my ministry, there's always been a kind of a black sheet of the church and you know what um since i've been in covid i don't really know if there is such a person as this in, in our church but in any churches there is always always a, a black sheep whether it's in the youth ministry or elementary ministry or that I, I remember one time um getting a phone call from my lead pastor it says hey you know ben would you like to come and search for mr lee and so is he lost? He goes, oh, you know, we have no idea where he is because he hasn't been coming home for two weeks. And his wife is really, really worried. So I remember, I remember, you know what, driving around, you know, driving around the city that where I live. It was in Fullerton. And we, we, we drove for days. And, and finally we found where he was, right? He, he was somewhere where he was not supposed to be, but he was there. So we found him. And next time, next time, you know, we get a phone call. We get a phone call. Hey, you know what? Um, we just found that Mr. Lee has cancer. So what kind of cancer? Well, he, he has a cancer that has spread to his, his tongue. And, and they're going to um, cut off his tongue. They're, they're going to, because, you know, the tongue has spread, the cancer has spread to his tongue. Now, I remember the first time that we had visited Mr. Lee in the hospital. He, he was very bitter. He, he was very, very angry. And, and I, I remember the first time as, as I walked in, just behind being protected by the lead pastor, right? And I was the youth pastor at the time. I, I remember going in and him throwing, you know, the stuff. He was throwing the bedpans and he was throwing, he was angry, he was cursing at us. And, but you know what? Little by little, we saw things change. But you know what? I'll be honest with you. Nothing really changed much. And I think, you know what, maybe a couple of months had passed. And we were trying to figure out ways for us to present the gospel. And I remember my senior pastor getting hit by the objects that he was thrown. I remember leaving, right, leaving. Man, you know, once again, I, I was a very, very young youth pastor. Like, do we need to go through this, right? Is this something that my seminary professors have told me that, you know what, ready for a battlefield rather than in a playground. We found out that next tomorrow that the operation was going to take place. And I remember my, my senior pastor, you know what, there's nothing we can do now. He goes, I know, we tried everything. And I said, you know what, I, I still remember my senior pastor said, you know what, but we have one. We're going to pray. We're going to fast. We're going to pray. And I remember as a young youth pastor, 
Uh, you know, still kind of being trained. And I remember sitting next to him through the whole night, fasting and praying. And, and you know, I'll be honest with you. It, you know, th there was this kind of reservation that, you know, is it, this is going to work? Is this going to work? I, I remember in the morning, the, the operation was going to take about 10, 10 a.m. And we, we, we went home and we, we took a shower because we'd been at the church all, all night. And I, I met him at the front gate, front door of, of the hospital, and, and we walked. And, and all, you know, once again, I had this reservation. And we opened the door. Doctors were there. The nurses were there. And, and we were, honestly, I was ready for another, you know, what, him throwing things and cursing us. And I still remember the doctor telling, asking Mr. Lee, Mr. Lee, before this final, where we're going to take, remove some of your tongue, do you have any last request? Your last word that you want to say before you can't speak anymore. And I want to be honest with you. Right then, right then I saw something. I saw the power of the Holy Spirit. Because this man, his last word were not take care of my wife or I have this and that. His last words were, A song in his bed on his bed he said I love you Lord and I lift my voice to worship you all my soul rejoice joy, my King, in what you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet song in your ears. As a young pastor, I was blown away. I expected profanity, cursing at the, the church, Cursing at you know, us, cursing at the world. From yesterday and today, he was a totally changed person. You know, now that we've come out of this long spiritual sleep, you know, we want to begin flexing our spiritual muscles that we have been flexing. And maybe some of us had the opportunity to evaluate where we are spiritually this morning. As a person who's, who's opening up in person at worship from now on, I'm asking, let us go back to shape. You see, in order for you to be strong, in order for you to fight the fight, the good fight of faith, you must put on the faith, righteousness, and salvation. You must use the gospel, which is the word of God, and lastly, but leastly, we need to pray. If you were to ask me, and, and quite often people ask, so what's your vision for the church? Now that you've joined in a new, brand new transition, what is your vision? What, what is this one passion that you have for the church? If you were to ask me, I want CLC to be a church that prays. Prays in the morning, prays in the evening. But not only prayer, but you know what? We want to be able to experience the power of prayer. And so when the, the worship team comes, before, before we sing our last song, I, I want us to pray. Because 
now that for a, a year and three months, we have been kind of, you know, a shelter in place, and we've been kind of hibernation spiritually. And now that we're going to take, we want to be known again in this area. I bet you we're going to face a lot of these spiritual battles. And I feel like what God is saying to us, would you pray? Would you pray to release some of the strongholds that have been kind of captive? And so this morning as we sing and close our worship service, I want us to pray. I want you guys to pray right now. Rather that, you know what, you guys want to do this silently, if you guys want to, you know what, if you guys want to raise your voice. But I want us to pray. Father God, this morning, we woke up. I feel like we woke up from a spiritual kind of a sleep for a whole year and a half. Father God, I, I, I know that those muscles that, that we used to kind of flex, that we're no longer... It's difficult to kind of exercise those spiritual muscles that, that we once. But Father God, I'd like to just pray over our congregation to release. Just that the, the fact that, Lord, that, that we are now going to go back, to going to battle. It, it is a battleground. Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord, the message, as you wrap up in the sermon or, or the series of Ephesians, we put on all the armor and yet we forget. Sometimes I forget. And I'm just kind of negligent also. Father God, I ask in the name of Jesus, would you make CLC a believers that praise? Not just praise that, that what we're used to inundated with it used to, but Lord, we want to be able to see the power of prayer. Father God, um, those of us who are hurting, those of us that, that are physical illnesses, Father God, I want to be able to see the miracles through prayers. Father God, we, in, in our lives, Father God, that, that when we read the Bible, if we take out the miracles, it would just be left with just a few stories. I gotta ask. Sometimes we, we're like this this couple that are in a fight that goes on a long trip. That there is just no communication with you, Father God. I want us to change. And Father God, through the Word, through the prayers, Father God, I know that you can change. You know, our, our mission at CLC is to love you and to love people and to transform. Father God, we want to be transformed first so that we could transform the lives of those who are with us and are in us. Father God, this week, some of us are going back to work already. Lord, w would you allow us to put on the whole armor? And, and the armor was to be used so that we could actually go and preach the gospel with boldness. Father God, I ask in the name of Jesus, would you allow all of us, not only in this room, but also those who are watching, may we preach the gospel with boldness. Father God, I thank you so very much for this message, for this timely word that you've given to us. Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus, would you allow all of us who are in this room to come together in unison to take back, take back what Satan had taken over and help us to expand the territory of the kingdom. Father God, we want to expand your kingdom. And that is the, the thing that, that I want to live for, that we all want to live for. Father God, I thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank Thank you, Pastor Ben, for that powerful message. Church, we're going to continue to respond with one last song of worship. And I invite you, if you are still praying, continue to do that. Um, we, uh, we're just going to give this time and space for you to reflect on, on those words. And, um, yeah, if you feel...
If you want to stand, if you want to kneel, if you want to pray during this time, feel free to do any of those things. Trust what you say, that you're good, your love is great. I'm broken inside, I give you my love. I need you to soften my heart.
church, would you receive this benediction today? May the God of peace, who brought up from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, and ratified an eternal covenant with his blood, may he equip you with all you need for doing his will. May he produce in you through the power of Jesus Christ every good thing that is pleasing to him. All glory to him forever and ever. Amen. All right, church, thank you once again for joining us uh, online and in person. Uh, just a few quick announcements before we close. Uh, if you have any prayer requests or any needs at all, our prayer team is available 24-7 uh, all week. And so if you have those, please send those to prayer at christianlayman.org, and someone from the prayer team will contact you this week. Now, if you have tithes or offerings, financial gifts, uh, please make those online at christianlayman.org slash give, and all the information is on there for you. And last reminder, we don't have a virtual social hall today um, for July or August, but feel free to reach out to some other church friends and grab lunch and enjoy the beautiful day outside. Oh, Pam is oh. also offering prayer after service in yes. the back. For those of you here, um, if you would like to receive prayer, that's in the back. <laughs> All right, that's a wrap. We'll see you same time, same place next Sunday. Have a great week, everyone.